What is going on everybody and welcome to a tutorial series that I have been looking forward to for quite some time and that is building AIs in StarCraft 2. So if you don't know what StarCraft 2 is, it's just a kind of like strategy game, uh, very much like Command and Conquer, Age of Empires, if you ever played those, um, where you've got workers and you, so you start off with some workers, you collect some resources, you build more buildings, you research upgrades, you amass an army and you annihilate your enemy. So, so that's basically the game. So uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's basically it. So uh, around like mid 2017, DeepMind, the machine learning slash deep learning um, company, partnered with Blizzard, the creators of StarCraft II, to create an API around the game to help people uh, create artificial intelligences to play the game. DeepMind's main interest uh, seems to be more like cre creating reinforcement learning algorithms. But with the API, you can do anything from just creating simple rule-based bots all the way up to, yes, like a reinforcement learning algorithm that you would hope could, could defeat other players. Um, unfortunately, the game is unbelievably complicated, and to my knowledge, there exists no reinforcement learning algorithm that's actually decent at playing the game yet, just because of the extreme level of complexity to the game. Now, um, what you need to play is uh, pretty simple. It, the StarCraft II is free to play now, so you just need to just download it and install it and all that. And then we're going to be using Python-SC2 to interact with the actual API itself. Uh, quick shout out, by the way, to my two recent sponsors, Niedzvich and Werther's Original, uh, a user named Werther's Original, not actually Werther's Original, the company. If you didn't know, you can sponsor the channel. Uh, if you're looking at a video, there should be a blue sponsor button. Some countries it's not available. Uh, but if you click on that, you can see the perks that we get. Basically, uh, you get early access to some of the content and you get the opportunity to shape future content via polls that I put up for next topics that people would like to see. Also, you even most importantly, you get certain emojis for live chat and then also a chat badge just like in the comment section. So if you want to support, awesome. This is my full-time job. And if you want to um, help me continue making content like this, uh, you sure can. Now, uh, what we're going to do is, so yeah, first of all, you need to go to uh, Battle.net, basically make an account, head to the download section and download StarCraft 2. I'm on Windows, uh, you can get it on Mac. I, I believe there's a way to get it on Linux. I, I really don't know anything about putting it on Linux. I may eventually be finding out, but uh, at least for now, Windows and Mac. So, uh, once you have that, you're going to uh, need Python-SC2. Not to be confused with PySC2. So Python SC2 is a different wrapper than PySC2. Now PySC2 is from DeepMind themselves. It's really more focused around uh, reinforcement learning, and it's a more complicated package, if you ask me. Uh, I think this one's a little easier to get started with, and you could definitely do reinforcement learning and all that. It's just PySC2 offers. Um, some things more oriented towards deep learning and stuff that will probably save you time later on down the road. So we may find ourselves using that package later, uh, but for now, Python-SE2. So uh, to get that, it's just pip install SE2, super simple. Um, once you have those packages, you also need the map packs. Now I've linked to them in the text-based version of this tutorial, and I'll try to put them in the description of the tutorial as well, um, but here they are. Uh, so what you're going to want is at least one of these. I would say just get them all. Might as well have a bunch of maps that you can play on. Um, but uh, you should at least probably grab like season one. We're just going to be playing on that first map in there. Oh, you just have to download it. Sorry. So anyway, I was going to show you the maps in there. Um, and then when you have those, you want to extract those to your actual uh, StarCraft II environment. So let me pull up. Uh, see if I have one up or not. I don't think I do. My water's in the way. Mm, I don't, but let me just pull it up real quick just so you get an idea because this is pretty important. Otherwise, it's not going to find it. So uh, if you go to wherever you like installed, like, it's probably in like, your C drive and then program files or something like that. Uh, let me find mine real quick, StarCraft 2. So I actually installed mine in a J drive. 
Um, didn't want to give up precious solid state space for the game. Um, inside of here uh, is the actual game itself. You probably don't have a maps directory yet. Go ahead and make one. And then inside of here is where you're going to extract your actual maps. And then inside there are your maps. So don't make, make sure you just don't extract maps directly into the maps directory um, because it's not going to find them for whatever awesome reason. Uh, it just won't. So uh, moving this aside, I'm going to assume most people probably didn't even have this game installed. So probably here I would recommend you pause <laughs> and wait till you actually have the game downloaded and installed. Otherwise, what we're going to go ahead and do now is proceed to the actual part of the tutorial. So let me pull up some code here. So this is actually what's running right now off here. And I'm going to go ahead and just close out of this. We're going to forfeit the match. Sorry, guys. And I'll close this one out too. And I always get this. It always takes me like forever to clear this thing out. I thought I could just like right click. Maybe it's a left click. There we go. Hide panel. Okay. So um, working with this is actually pretty darn simple, but it's just kind of like getting used to the, the patterns that you have to have to use. So in order to make use of the package, we're just going to need to import SC2 and make that a little bigger. Uh, and then we're going to go from sc2.import, I'm sorry, from sc2, import run game. That's just going to have us actually be able to like launch the game and play the game based, based on certain parameters. We're going to import maps. We're going to import race. And then we're going to import difficulty. So the only thing I didn't really talk too much about is race. So in the game, there's three different races. You've got uh, Teron, pronounced some way. Zerg and you have uh, Protoss and Teron appears to me to be more like humans. Zerg is like some sort of bugs and then Protoss is like technology slash robots based. So we're going to be playing as Protoss. seems the most fitting. Um, but there are other races and each race has their own kind of um, perks and disadvantages and stuff like that. So again, just more complexity that we need to uh, probably worry about li way later on down the road. And then difficulty is for the bot that we're just going to play against just to, to, to have somebody to play against. You can also play against your own bot, but especially like starting off, you probably want to play against the, you know, just built in box. There's like an easy, a medium and a hard. And then once you can like consistently beat the hard bot, then sure, you might want to go ahead and compete against maybe your own bot or a variety of different bots. Then what we're going to do is from se2.player, we're going to import that bot and computer. So bot is us. Like if you want to have something that runs based on a class that you write, you use bot. Otherwise, the computer is just the computer AI. So I'm going to start with my class Centibot. And that's going to inherit from se2.botAI. So what is botAI? So if you go to your installation directory for se2, so just wherever your Python is, libs, ipackages, se2, you'll see there's botAI. If you go ahead and right click that, I'll just open an idle just because. Um, and in here, you can see the botAI class and all the methods that it has um, available to it. Um, you've got things like enemy start location, so you can pretty relatively know, like especially if it's 1v1, you guys will be at opposite ends of the map, so you, you'll know where the enemy has started. But if you wanted to send some units to that location, like maybe you don't know exactly where they are, but they're probably around there, uh, you could just tell your units to go that way. Known enemy units, this is just where you know enemy units to have been. You have to have seen them, but once you know about it, once you've seen them, uh, you can go there. Known enemy structures, same sort of thing. Um, where have we expanded to, uh, your available abilities, expand now, which is actually a pretty useful, um, method. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Distribute workers, also one of the more useful methods, also somewhat complicated. Um, anyway, there's a bunch of methods here, uh, that you can use, but the, all of these are inherited. So just keep that in mind. So coming back over here. Oh, and while we're here, um, I'm just going to pop it into paths. So just in case you did like me install it to a different directory, um, the game, you'll need to modify paths. So in my case, I changed Windows install path to, to be where I put it. So just keep that in mind if you changed it. OK, so we're inheriting from the SC2 bot AI. So one of the things that that has is an on step um, 
basically it's it's what do you want to do every step so so when the game actually runs um, it's going to check first your on step method so we're going to define uh, as an asynchronous method async def on step self and iteration so every step that we get basically um, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to distribute our workers. This is a method that's already been written for us, as I just showed you. Distribute workers. And um, all this does basically is, so you're going to start the game with 12 little workers, and then you need to tell them what to do. So in the game, uh, there's two different types of resources. There's minerals, and then there's like this gas. And at least to start, we're just going to grab the minerals. And what this is going to do is basically any more than three workers per little mineral patch is too many. You're not, there's no benefit to having any more than that. So the idea of distribute workers is to, to intelligently distribute them. Now, that's fairly complex operation, um, but it's already been written for us. So we're just going to use that one as just to get us started uh, with working with uh, this, this API. So there's distribute workers for us. That's all we're gonna actually do with our bot. Now what we wanna do is actually run the game. So to do that, it's run game. And then you're gonna specify where are you running it? Like what map are we gonna run on? And then you give the player list. And then if you want to, you can specify the run speed basically. Is it real time, either true or false? If it's true, it's gonna run at a regular speed. False, it's gonna run ultra fast, like as fast as it can run basically. So, so you're not like wasting time. Like once you get through these earlier stages, there's really no point in sitting through them. <laughs> so, so it's better to, to real time false. For now, we'll keep it as true. Anyway, maps.get. And then you're just going to specify one of the maps. I think I've closed it. I don't know if I left it. Nah, yeah, I closed it. But anyways, in your maps, you've got the map name, and it's like .se2 map or something like that. Just copy and paste the map name over. So I'm going to use Abyssal Reef LE. So that's going to get that map for us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to specify the list of players. So first, we're going to have a bot player. The bot will be race.protoss. And then the actual bot itself is going to be sent a bot. Then, and actually, we need to do that. Then what we're going to do is specify the next bot, which is going to be a computer player. And the computer will be race.teron. And then it's going to be a difficulty.easy for now. So later on, especially if we, um, if we find that this is like a really easy, we're defeating that bot. Um, we'll want to upgrade that to medium and then we'll upgrade it to hard and then once hard is easy We'll probably maybe a couple hards or three other hards and then um, And then maybe incorporating our own bot into the mix So then uh, we'll do the real time and that will be for now will equal true If everything's the way we want it, uh, why are you? Okay Weber Okay so let's go, oh, did I typo? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Difficulty, isn't that not, wait, sorry, I got it. Difficulty, culty. okay. <laughs> anyway, running that. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through all your maps, find the one that you wanted to play, and eventually it will launch the game for us. The other thing you'd want to do before upgrading your bot, like if you're consistently winning, is probably change the map, try a different map, and see how well you do. So anyways, right away, we can see our little workers are quick to start collecting resources. Um, and then they yeah, like, you would want only three per little patch, because each patch is three minerals. It's kind of pointless to have more than three workers on each path. Patch, rather. <laughs> okay, so um, I hate to break it to you, but... You're probably not going to win any games uh, <laughs> by doing this. So uh, w we, need to, we need to have quite a few other things like building buildings and upgrading and building our actual army and attacking and expanding our base here, all that stuff. But hopefully, at least up to this point, you're starting to catch on to, to, to how this is going to work. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial where things hopefully get a little more excited than, than just collecting resources. Okay, till next time.